Welcome back to the Nassiman Hockey Podcast. John Zella, James Nichols. Um, we're in the All-Star break, which gives us a little bit of a chance to slow down for a second. Uh, we're in the first few weeks of, of WA here. Um, we had some hockey to talk about, uh, but it gives us a chance to slow down a little bit and let's evaluate. But I do want to start with Alumni Weekend. Did you pay attention to anything um, on, on Saturday night there, that whole weekend, really? Yeah, a little, a little bit, not too, too much, but yes, I, I know a little bit here and there. So I, I tweeted this out, um, but I was a little disappointed to see Darius Kasparaitis on the Rangers yeah, and not the Islanders. And now I recognize he plays for both. He played for both. Um, but it really, it just didn't make me feel good. Especially it was in the Islanders rink, uh, their practice facility, I believe. It, it didn't, it didn't make me feel great. Um, did you catch any of that? Like there's some videos yeah. kind of floating around. Yeah, there were some videos and the the main one I think of, you know, for Casparitis was him uh second in line to Hamrick Lundqvist, making him go take the rookie lap for his first alumni game. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, um, that's actually where I saw it. That's where I saw yeah. Casparitis and I was like, God man, that that kind of yeah. bums me out. So I, I super get your allegiance to wanting him in blue and orange, but um I thought that that was a great moment. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't wear my jersey tonight. <laughs> I not, not, not good planning. Um, I saw, and this is like a long running joke. If you're a fan of the Islanders from ten years ago, maybe even more. Um, Radic Martinek uh, is ready to go as usual. Um, it was great to see him kind of out there skating around. Saw him a couple conversations with Thomas Hickey and. Um, on the ice, and it's just a running joke that he's always ready to hop back in the Islanders lineup. So it's good to see that he's uh, still knows the directions to Iceworks and or where, whatever it's called now, uh, and they can they can call him up uh, as they need. Um, did you see the 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 puck drop against the Panthers? The the um, the the ceremonial the gloves with the no the, oh, the ceremonial no. puck drop. So. I, I can't remember all of them that were there, but I thought it was really weird to see Turgeon and LaFontaine at the puck drop together, given that they were traded for one another. So it was weird to see them both in Islander jerseys in the same building. Um, I don't know if you, if, I, don't, I, I guess you didn't catch that. I just thought that was no, very odd um, to kind of see them there together. And it's good that LaFontaine is kind of, uh, his relationship with the team is mending that he's able to kind of do those things. Um, that was not something that I would have guessed he did. They had a LaFontaine night a million years ago when he was going to the hockey hall of fame. Was that 2003? And I have a, I have a puck from it actually, but yeah, it was, it, it, so it was good to see him there, but it was weird to see him in Turgeon. Um, Bailey's return was super cool. Obviously, people were singing the song. That was cool. Um, I'm hoping he gets a PTO just for like a one more night, kind of like Alfredson did in Ottawa, where they just like he just does warm ups um, just so that we get one last, you know, because technically he was traded to Chicago. Like, I think if he's really done and it kind of seems like he is, um, which stinks because he's like a year older than me, which is so it's terrible. (laughs) It's like 34, 33, right? He's like, I think he's an 89. Um, so I, I hope the honors bring him back, um, even just for a game to, uh, in, in, the, in the near future, if he, once he finally, re- uh, is set to retire so that he can do it as an Islander. I, th- I think that would be doing right by him. Uh, did you catch anything else from the weekend? Um, I saw Johnny Boychuk was there. I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, I, I always forget that he's like part of the organization still. Right, because he's he's behind the scenes so much, um, and then when he pops up, I'm like, oh yeah, like what a great defenseman he was for for the Islanders. Like that was, you know, it was a, an interesting time where he came in and him and Letty were kind of like the transition from where a joke of an organization to like, okay, we're we're taking steps in the right direction here. And um, that was a crazy day. That was ten years ago yeah, this September yeah. or whatever that was. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously they had Tavares and, you know, Bailey was on the team and he was he was playing well. But like once they got Boychuk and, and Letty, it was like, OK, 
you know, now they're cooking a little bit now that they have a little bit going on in, in the lineup. So, well, you um, just knew who these guys were. It was a, yeah, a different time yeah. where like the Islanders traded because it, thinking about Garth Snow, and if, if you're not familiar with the era, it was just random waiver pickups or guys that didn't want to be there, um, didn't want to report or this or that. You know, Nabokov didn't want to be there. Osgood didn't want to be there. Ryan Smith wouldn't resign. It was just like it was seemingly just one thing after another forever that no one wanted to play on the Islanders. Um, and then they Garth Snow traded for these two guys. And you're like, oh, I actually know who those guys are. And they won Stanley Cups. Right. Like they like recently. Recently. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, it's like we do this for a living. Or something. Yeah. But so it was crazy to, to see that. And it, like all of a sudden the defense was changed. Um, and as you said, it was almost like everyone got put in their place rightfully in the lineup. It, we weren't, you yeah. weren't pushing anybody out. And it was, yeah, it was very weird. I thought one of the stranger, it's just like, Again, is I think players I just forgot that played for the Islanders. Al Montoya, I believe, was playing in this game, uh, in the yeah. game against the Rangers. Um, I, I, that just like threw me for a loop for a second. Again, it was like in that era where there was like 15 goalies. Um, that would be a good trivia Thomas question. Was there, that was cool. I think I saw Thomas, Gr- yeah, he was at the game, he was at the the game against the Panthers, right? Did he play and did he skate as well? Um, I only saw him. Off, off the ice. I didn't see him on the ice, so I'm not sure. But I know that he was there. Like, his wife was there. Like, it's so... It's... This was one of those things where, you know, it just goes to show, like... Like, obviously, Thomas Grice played in other places um, after his Islander career. And granted, you know, if the other teams that he played for do alumni weekends, I'm sure he'll be invited and go to those too. But these guys are always... You know, they always come back to Long Island. Like, it just goes to show you how much they love the place once they're there. Yeah, let me uh, let me read off the roster uh, of, of the Islanders. So Sean Bates, which I loved, uh, he was there. I I saw him handing out sticks and warm ups. I thought that was very funny. Um, Eric Cairns, that is very funny. Steve oh, Webb, that's right. Yeah, that's Steve um, Webb I saw. Ben Wahog, Radic Martinek, Marty Reasoner, the faceoff man himself, Dennis Seidenberg. Um, which 2017-18 doesn't it. It obviously is a, a good chunk of time ago, but it does not seem like he's been gone uh, away from the team that long. Boy, Chuck Molson, um, Kip Brennan, uh, a cup of coffee. That's probably a weird Islanders uh, episode if I've ever seen one, if they haven't already done that. Uh, Dave Scatcherd, that one was that was a great name to see. Turjan, and then Kevin Poulin. Uh, so maybe I saw maybe I saw uh, Al Montoya somewhere else. I feel like he was there, like his name popped up, and maybe was he, was he there the, for Florida because he played. For maybe them. he, maybe he was there during, during that. Um, yeah, but it's I, I, that was a that's a pretty good group. Good to see Matt Molson back. Uh, very cool. Yeah. He was there a, such a long time. I forgot. Two thousand nine to thirteen. You know what it is? Like it's not. It's only four seasons, but it kind of felt like forever. Molson, I think, still lives in the area because uh, he's the Maple Leaf scout. And he's often at the Devils games, so I see him all the time. And oh, interesting. Yeah, that's why I I've, I haven't forgotten, um, you know, about him because just because like he's always he's always in in Newark, which is interesting. Um, he's just the nicest guy. Like I I you know say hello to him all the time. We just like chit chat a little bit. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I anticipate he'll be there. Um, when we when we come off a break, and I was gonna you know talk to him about because I I don't know if he. I can't remember if they crossed paths. I don't think they did. Um, if he ever like actually got to play with Matt Barzell, I wanted to talk to him about, you know, being put in the all-star game, which we can talk about later too. Um, or in the skills competition. Sorry. I don't, I don't think they did not. No, I know they weren't teammates. Cause obviously, he Oh, just cross is it just in general, just in general. Yeah. Cause I know he's been on like the ice and, and stuff like that with the, with the team, not like in a coaching thing, just, you know, skates sure. with, among skies and stuff like that. Just want to, pick his brain a little bit but yeah super nice guy he's always down to talk transitioning to now an islanders alum um i don't have any notes on this other than the last name and it's parise um yeah wanted to get just like raw reaction i feel like we've been sitting with it for a couple days so it's not super fresh but um what a blow and you could tell the guys were bummed. Yeah, 
you know what? Like, the thing is, you can't be mad at him for making that decision. Of course Obviously, not. he still has those competitive juices in him, and he, he wants to compete for a cup. And look, if you're going to choose a team of all the bidders for you that have the best chance to go win a cup, putting your money on the Avalanche is a pretty good bet. So, And to know that you're going to go in that lineup as a recent 20-plus goal scorer, potentially to be able to do that on their third line, maybe their second, but I feel like he'll be like he was with the Islanders, a third liner. I mean, he's going to take that probably nine out of ten times. Then that that tenth time is going to be Matthew Barzell literally begging him, please come yeah. back. You it's, know, but it stinks. I think, and and the the offense part and the leadership and all that is obviously invaluable, but it's the penalty kill. That is where he, they need the most help, and that's where he was an enormous. Like he just he played 164 games. Uh, with the Islanders and was an enormous part of the success of that of that penalty kill. And it would have been yeah. a great injection. I think the biggest sting of it all is just the fact that, you know, his choice speaks volumes to where veteran players believe the Islanders to be right now. And that was the, it's, as I said, the, the players are super bummed. Like what did Barzell, I'm paraphrasing, like I I'm mad we couldn't be in a better position. Like they knew exactly what happened. Yeah. That's uh that's a tough blow for a team. And you know, especially this is a club that has a lot of confidence in themselves and in the room, um, despite where they are in the standings. We'll talk about that. Um yeah, that's a that's really tough for the team. Uh and you really think that they would they'd have a chance. And and I what I thought you were gonna say was that he pretty much said it's the islanders are nowhere. And maybe that's what you were alluding to. Well, he he did say that. Right. He um, said that, but he didn't like given where the team is. It, right. It didn't work. Right. Exactly. So, you know, the fact that he did say that um, and then, you know, it came out later that, you know, he chose somewhere else. Just that that's the biggest it's thing things. at all. I, I the, this, the biggest thing is not him saying like it's Islanders or nowhere um, at the time. That was true. You know, then he had some time to sink his teeth into it because he opted not to start the season with everyone else. And, you know, he, he, he watched this whole thing. I mean, a brand new coach, he, what's he going to go in? I, I get it. You know what we're seeing, despite some of the losses, we'll talk about that later with Patrick was encouraging, but you can't blame the guy for, you know, potentially being in his last half of a season, right? He could retire after this and, and not trusting to go to a team with a brand new NHL coach. Like, Oh, you it, go with just... the, the sure thing. Right. So, oh, or the, you know, as sure of a thing as can be in the NHL. Yeah. For sure. Now, granted, you know, if Lane Lambert was still there, would, would Parise, uh, have chosen differently? Maybe. I think it was where probably the team was. Not. Yeah, right. probably. probably. Probably not. No. But, you know, again, like he's going to go with the short thing and that's with the avalanche. So yeah. I, listen, for me, I'm a Zach Parise fan. Go win a cup. Oh, a hundred percent. And I like Colorado. I don't have any beef with them. Uh, as far as the West is concerned, it, it seems like it's them and Edmonton at this point. Uh, Edmonton um, may never lose again. They're taking the Sudbury blueberry bulldogs approach to this and never losing a game ever again. Uh, maybe they had Jared Kelso come in, uh, who play Shorzy, um, and and give that speech. But yeah, they're on they're on quite the tear. Quick pause um, on that though. What an awful time to have an All Star break for them. For them, or I mean, or yeah, or to, the best time, like, so that they don't run out of steam. Maybe, yeah. It's just like, how do you carry that momentum? Maybe I don't know. Tough. Tough choice there. It's like so, it's like Sophie's choice. It's like, hey, you want to take a break after this ridiculous, you know, tear that you've been on, or you want to yeah. keep going because you're hot. Well, I think that's a, that's a good way to segue into the Islanders here. I, I think as long as you come back, lose that game, lose it in regulation, fine, break the streak, get it out of the way. Frankly, um, I think you say that afterwards, right? That's not you don't go into the game like, all right, let's just lose it and get it out of the way. But all right. Play it, just play it. Your goal is come back and play a good game. Play as well as you were during the streak. 
and just you're not going to win. That's completely fine. Um, you can still have momentum and lose a game. You can still have a good, good record and still be considered a really good team, even though you're not continuing a ridiculous streak that you're on. So I'm not. I, if I'm them, I wouldn't worry about it. Come back, just play well. That's it. Doesn't need to be a win. And I and I like I said, I think that's a good transition to the Islanders because first of all, I can't get over that this guy's the coach. Um, it is just the weirdest thing to see his name popping up uh, around the team. Um, I wanted to get so I, I do want to go into the good and the bad and the worse, but I I want to start with overall impressions of. What you've seen over the last, uh, the the first is it two weeks or something close to that of of yeah, Patrick Waugh like behind that. the bench. Um, something what, like what, that. Yeah. What are your overall impressions so far? Um, they are definitely a team that looks like they're trying to transition from one system to another. However, their these signs are encouraging. They are a team that you can see the pace is being pushed. You know, attack, 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 and defend, defend, defend. And there's no like in between there, um, but when they fall off because they fall into you know old habits, you you see you see like the Lambert coming out in them, <laughs> to, you know, not, not to pin, you know, all, all the negativity on Lambert. I think he had you know his positives as a coach as well, um, you know, but some of the bad habits that they, uh, let's say, inhabited under his you know, uh, under his leadership. I think I think that's it is like yeah. not seeing the mistakes and making the change and right. so. you know definition of insanity blah blah blah. It was a lot of just watching the same thing happen and not. It was hard to have accountability. They really just they're, you were just rearranging deck chairs to a certain extent, but um, it was the way that they were losing games with him, and we've kind of discussed that. And it was like uh, personnel and being out late in games, and you're like, why? Why is Matt Martin out here with four minutes left or three minutes left or worse? And tied game or down a goal, and you're like, what? Did, what do you think is going to happen here? Like, what's the actual um, outcome that you're expecting? Um, but I'm in, I'm in the same boat, and I think you know to go into some of the good. The first thing, and I think I tweeted this from our account, way more jump in their game. They have so much more energy. They're going out there, and um, and this is as much energy as maybe we saw them have since the first Barry Trotz year just where it was coming out there it, it wasn't quite to the same level as the series against the Penguins where they swept them but they just had energy um they're showing a little resilience still they're working some things out obviously it's not going to be perfect the breakouts are better um defense are making better first passes the whole thing looks better I I think on the bad side of things, the, the, the defensive structure is not going to get fixed overnight. And so it, it still kind of stinks and, and their, you know, goaltending is still struggling. And what I wanted to, I wanted to point this out to you. Um, and I, this was, I'm using part of a tweet from Anthony LaRocco. I don't know who this person is. I think they're, maybe they're a Ranger fan, but I popped up in my for you on Twitter. What do Vasilevsky, Shosturkin, Ottinger, and Sorokin and Soros have in common this season. Name those again. Vasilevsky, Shosturkin, Ottinger, Sorokin, Soros. What do they have in common? What do they have in common this season? Oh. I don't know. You stumped me. They all have a below a nine ten save percentage this season. Those are arguably the best goalies in the NHL. But yeah. if you were going to name five of the best goalies, real hard to kind of go outside of that. Now this season there are goalies better. Stuart Skinner, you know, just the Oilers are playing really well, and obviously his numbers are really good. But Thatcher Demko, Thatcher Demko, I don't have his Lindgren. Like these, these yeah, some of these names are just nowhere. So. Sorokin has the best save percentage at 908 out of all of them. So that really says something. So he's not been good, but it's been a trend. So I don't know, a trend. It's a, a interesting coincidence that all of the best goalies, or who you think are the best goalies in the world, are now Vasilevsky's not as many games because he came back from an injury. Um, 
So maybe set him aside, but he's at a 901. Shesterkin's at a 901. Ottinger's a 903. Sorogan's at a 908, like I said, and Soros is 904. So it's that's quite the coincidence, frankly. Yeah, if if there's anything else that the, those teams all have in common, maybe maybe besides Dallas, their defenses are not that great. Like the, the Rangers have been exposed recently. Tampa Bay isn't what it once was, right? Still not not saying that you can bet on them not to make the playoffs because they'll they'll be fine, I think. And they're in the third yeah. in the in the Atlantic again, right? So they kind of woke yeah. up. I mean, they're on the line. It's right, but tough, I don't think but... they're as you know locked down defensively as they used to be. Um, you know, the Islanders we've seen you know their struggles, um, and Nashville, like Nashville, can't decide if they're rebuilding or or, or if they're you know continuing to move forward with what they've got. So um, I think except for Dallas, you know, that that those are surprising numbers, but I think all of their blue, blue lines have become weaker since last season or seasons prior. So it doesn't surprise me. Like Shesterkin obviously played out of this world for the Rangers for a while. It's not sustainable to do forever. No, it, it... – the team was playing well in front of him. It was like a lot of things kind of came together and coalesced right. and to, the same, to help him there. The same could be said of Sorokin. Like, can't do that forever. So, right, um, yeah. There's a point where it need you need to support it throughout. I mean, luckily Varlamov has a nine fourteen and uh, two eighty eight goals against average, and Sorokin has a three seventeen. Um, not fantastic, but you're you're dealing with just a lot of comebacks and uh, you know it's a lot of soft goals. I haven't watched all these goalies play. A whole lot, but if they're anything like Sorokin, yeah, it's a lot of soft goals. Not what you would expect from someone that was just out of this world for pretty much, you know, two years um, of his career. This is his third real season, um, something like that, right? Um, this is his fourth season. So yeah, for three years he was just playing out of his mind. Um, really, the last two and. Yeah, so he's he's facing more shots. Uh, I think he's on pace to face more shots than he has the last two years. So it's it's been difficult. That's something that Patrick Waugh has to figure out for the Islanders. Um, something else that I that I saw, and obviously, like they can't close out games consistently. Isles Fix had a good stat: uh, eighteen overtime games only earned a second point, so the winning point. Six times they're five and nine in OT and one and three in shootouts. Um, I added, I they may have had some of this too. I also have won just one of their last eight games and just three of their last 14 points in only five of 14. Yeah. Our but our buddy Joe Pantorno said, I was lucky to be in fourth in the metro, four points back of fourth place. Yeah, um, and that's for the wild card spot. And they have a game in hand on Philly, they're four points behind them. Um, they've lost five in a row. The only saving grace here is it doesn't seem like anybody wants to win in the net, in the Metro recently. Um, and th they've all kind of been struggling. So the Pittsburgh Penguins have fallen off a little bit. Uh, the Devils have lost two in a row. Uh, the Capitals are four or five and one in their last 10. So the only the two, six and two Islanders in their last 10 are only really being buoyed by the fact that the rest of the Metro has also sucked. So they're they're still there. And this is largely where they were last season, like in this exact spot just outside the wild card or in or out or whatever um all of that information that i just kind of threw out at you um is there a point where you know you talk about the islands being buyers or sellers or whatever the case is and i don't like that as necessarily as a barometer but can they sneak back in like there's some, there's a lot of hockey to be left right there's a little less than half the season it's not time to throw in the towel. No, definitely not. Um, you know, I, I think although what we've been seeing from the Islanders recently might look discouraging at first in terms of what the score sheet says and and the um, the outcomes of the games, looking at the product on ice and and how that's been working, obviously it's not perfected yet, but you could see them going in the right direction. I think that the coaching has 
obviously vastly improved. And I think it's just a matter of time before, you know, they break out and, and start to really understand what it is that Patrick was asking of them. So um, I, I don't by any means think that they're out of it yet. I think that they're probably still going to look to add, even if it's, you know, even, even if there's no way that they're going to make the playoffs, I still think that they add because I don't think it's just a short-term thing. And maybe they don't add at the deadline. Maybe they stand pat. I know you'll all love to hear that, but I think that there's only going to be just because you you know, you're not making any major subtractions. All of these guys who are locked up are staying. Yeah, and especially I not like there's a there's a couple guys that they're UFAs like a Clutterbuck or a Martin or whatever. Yeah. Like there's some small moves that happen. Right, but you're not going to see a Brock Nelson get traded, right? Like that's that that's a name that's going to come up because of I don't understand. Much, like it's it's that's the one name I don't understand. On, it's because of how much time was left on his deal, and and that's why I think it's like after this he's a hold on I have it up. He's got one season after this year left on his deal, so he's he'll be a a pending UFA in in two summers. The thing is that's why his name is going to come up, but I don't see them moving him unless they go like full rebuild like it's not i don't think it's gonna happen yeah he's a he's a core part and it is again yeah. he's contributing it's not like right um anders lee that's the i think a really tough one he's got two more years the thing is he doesn't have value so i think you're saying right. like oh okay nelson at least has value um and has you know the right amount of time left where it's a tra- really attractive to teams where it's not a rental um and they may be able to resign them afterwards and and really get them in there. So it's it's a little um yeah, it's uncomfortable to think about that. I obviously don't think that's going to happen. Looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. The San Francisco 49ers are favorites to win the 2024 Super Bowl at a minus 120. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877 877-8- Hope New York or text Hope NY 467369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Arthur Stable did a, a, a trade article um, about the Islanders and, you know, buyers or sellers or whatever. Um, before getting there really quickly, you know, the worst, so that was the good, the bad, and the worse or the ugly is that um, Pelic may be out following uh, Brendan Gallagher checked to the head of which he was suspended five games. I kind of wanted to ask if five games was enough. I kind of appreciated Wa's answer, which was it does not matter for the Islanders. Um, it's worse that Pelic is out. So it's yep. like, it's irrelevant how long he's suspended. I mean, for the safety of the players, in the league, you know, obviously there's, there's a point there, but in, in the short term, just looking at like, is Pelic going to be healthy? If he's out for the season, they could be looking for a defender. And, I think it just hurts. Like you think about the rest of his career, he's had a ton of injuries. Not even just this year. It's it's just always been something. He's been rattled this year anyway. He does not look the same coming back. Um, either as Pulak, um, who's still yet to return. Um, luckily, he's just the uh, Pelic is listed day to day. He has a week now off. Uh, in, you know, before February fifth. So there's some time to kind of figure that out. Um, if the Islanders add, do you think, you know, because we've had this discussion, so now we're kind of like 
reevaluating after a while and and different things. What do you think about a player like Noah Hannafin um, on on defense, which I think would be really squirrely to kind of try to fit in, um, given again the contract that the Islanders have, things like that. Um, can they? I mean, there's Jacob Chikrin is listed. Um, is is there really anywhere to to add on the back end for the Islanders? Well, yes, because you are, you're asking outside of one edition. Like, are you saying a second edition? Well, I wonder, if, you know, if it's a one defender and then a forward, like a third line forward or something. Yeah. And I think that's where we landed the last time we discussed yeah. this too. No, I think that's definitely what it is. You look at what they have now. You know, obviously, Pellick could be hurt and not come back. We'll see. You know, concussions are no no joke. But you know, Dobson and and Romanov is one pair. Uh, Mayfield and Riley is another, and then uh, you have Pellick when he comes back, and you know Aho or Bolduck or, um, uh, no, that's it. So, um, you know, we'll see how long it takes for Bortuzzo to come back. They have these guys. I just don't know, you know, how Bort- uh, Bortuzzo just may be done. He, yeah, he's on IR. He's I don't see him on LTIR. Is is it like a long term thing? They said. I don't know. I think there may be a strategy for the deadline to not putting on LTIR. Yeah. Okay. Um, so regardless, let's just say, you know, that they're going to add one defenseman. You have Dobson and Romanov. You have, let's say, Mayfield, Riley, and you have Aho, Aho or Bulldog and Player X. And you have your seven. So I think they're set there. I think they're they're comfortable with that. Um, with the hopes that Adam Pellick does come back, you know, Ryan Pollock does come back. That's without naming those two players. Then you look at the forward group, I think, you know, and, and Friedman's been saying all along, they're still looking to add a scorer, which I could see. You know, we've been saying this for years. Yeah, I, and there's a, there's a part with, and I, you and I were texting about this, like, I'm I'm just, I'm not buying whatever whatever reporters are putting down lately about the Islanders. It just... It just has not been good, and it's. I'd rather just watch the games and you and I talk about it, like and and listen to a couple of the podcasts that I like. Like I don't, I really don't need it. I really don't need to listen to or read any of this stuff about the Islanders. Just, yeah, of course they're looking for a score. Like they're not good. They need a score. They need a defender. They're also not good there. It's like it's obvious. They need to change their coach. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole conversation. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about here? It's not like as expert analysis that they're bringing to the table. Um, I'm not trying to just, you know, bag on them. It just seems that that's just the narrative. I f- almost feel like around the Islanders, you're, you're just saying that because that's what we've been saying, and you don't know anything else. And you can't, even if you did, you can't say. So just, I don't know. I'd rather you just not talk about the Islanders, frankly. That would make it a little bit easier for me to just completely ignore. Um, did did he mention who, or just that they're looking for a scorer? Just that they're looking for a score. Um, not like he didn't get into the, the specifics of it. Yeah, I wonder. It's crazy because they have two guys with 20 goals, three with 13. Simon Holmstrom has 12. Like it's, and then you have obviously uh, Noah Dobson leading the team with 52 points. We all saw that coming. Um, Palmieri's cooled off you know lately he's he's kind of come back but i think i'm definitely coming to terms with like that second line can't be depended on quite the same way as we as we thought and it may take a little bit of rearranging of things to get that top six going so i'm not as confident and i know on our account i kind of um i, I questioned um shana goldman a little bit and i you know i kind of pushed back on a couple of comments she had about about the Islanders top six and how it wasn't that strong. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they have a really, for most of the season, they've had a really good expected goal share and um, they're just not getting the bounces. Um, and that's really what, you know, speaking just about why right now is they're playing so much better as a team. They just, at this point, these are the games, like if this is how it was going with Lambert, fine i mean like they gave they the the game against montreal was i I can't understand that um some of these losses are just the way that they do it but for the most part of games like the vegas game they they dominated that 
I'd rather just you not get the outcome and played well. And I, you're starting to see that a little bit under Wa, and I, that which is great progress. Um, at some point, as you said, they do need to add a score and and figure that out. I just don't know what that looks like. One of the guys, if we're gonna if we're gonna have this conversation, um, that I think would be a great fit, and I think this might have been on staples trade board but it has just popped into my brain maybe it was in the back of my mind because i read it but uh frank vetrano so that was in that was a yeah there was some french outlet that came out with that or it was like the ducks french blog or okay ducks in french i don't know i saw that um is that a good fit is that work dollars and cents wise what's what's his deal yeah so up his cap friendly real quick but you know he's on pace to score i think something like 30 goals he was real hot to start the season he's not you know scorching now he's at a 3.65 cap hit right now um he's got that for the next two seasons so you know a little bit of term right you like that he's got no trade protection i don't believe Nothing there on trade protection. He's got 21 goals and 35 points in 49 games this year. So, and and that's on a Ducks team, you know, a Ducks team that, yeah, has some young skill, but they're anything but structured right now. And, um, you know, going to play for the Islanders and potentially next to Barzell and Horvat, you know, that, that looks pretty good. So um, I, I don't know if he's like your quintessential first liner, but I think he's a really good complimentary piece. And I think Bar- like Barzell and Horvath could draw the best out of a guy like him. So throw him on a line with those two guys and you know, you're looking pretty good. Yeah, he shoots left, so that fits. He's just another 29, 30-year-old. You know, like, he's okay. about to turn 30. And, like, is that you just – he's here for one more year after this year. So that's a good, like, trade ship. You lose him after that. Depends on what you have to give up for him. But – yeah. It's funny you said. Um, oh God, I just lost it. What did you say? <laughs> no, it's a good trade ship to, you know, bring him in. But is another guy at thirty years old? Like, just you're just adding to the group of guys that are thirty. And I don't like that narrative about like if the Islanders win the cup, like oh, it's the experience. But if they lose, like they were too old. And it's okay. You're just making shit up at this point. And <laughs> the I think the Islanders are a tenth of a year older than vegas when they won the cup last year right and i'm like okay it, again they were like oh it's an experienced team and it's just a right group of guys and, burp, burp. and it's just bullshit as opposed to well they're young and inexperienced like this was just a good run for them or they were old they were never gonna last four rounds or you can just it, it can go either way at any point it was like oh they were young and hungry and they make it all the way it, it's it's nonsense so i don't really buy it long term it doesn't help though. It's not gonna like. You, it's gonna work one year. It may not work every year. So that's why I worry. Like, okay, if it's not gonna work this year, and it's gonna work next year, and he's gonna be yeah. a UFA, it, it just has to because you're giving up a you know, more picks or whatever. That's tough, man. That's you know, real tough. The thing, the reason why I think Vitrano is an appealing option is because you know he won't cost you, you know, what let's say an Alex DeBrinket would have cost you last year, right? He's going to cost probably a B chip prospect and a and a pick, which the Islanders could afford to do. And they need a defenseman. So that's the thing is like they're going to maybe need two pieces here. How do you get the best bang for your buck? And I think Vitrano fits that mold. You know, he he brings that scoring element that is a necessary addition to the lineup that's not going to you know break the bank and um allows you to be able to make another move so that's why i think he's a good fit there i think it it depends on what they're asking for that could absolutely be right he's definitely not like a a blue chip player or a top player where it could he's just having a good season so it's just driving up and again he has an extra year so it's it's tough he's um on pace to have the best year of his career this year. 
So it was a bad time to buy him. The best time was two years ago uh, when he was split in time between Florida and the and the after the Rangers. So the Ducks bought on him real at, at a great time. But he's yeah, he's about to have his best season statistically. He's one goal away from his uh, goal to, uh, yeah goal total from That's last year, a few from twenty four. Yeah, like this is a bad time to buy him. He's going to be expensive. Plus, is one year left. Yeah, I, I definitely don't. Um, I don't disagree. Um, what I thought was interesting, and I, I thought you would appreciate this. So, thinking about a trade up front and and who's healthy and 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 whatever. Um, I can't remember his his first name now that I um. The the McLean who's playing on the fourth line for the Islanders for for a little bit. Oh oh, Kyle. Kyle. So Travis Flynn, um, I don't think he listens to the show. I don't know. I saw it on Twitter. I thought he had a couple of good points this week, so I was saving him. Um, and, but he said if McLean continues to click at on the as a fourth line center, the Islanders could. I'm going to flip what he said because I I think I like the first the B better than A. So he says B create a super line of Nelson Horvat Barzell if one of Pajot or Sizikis is C two. Or A, double up Pajot and Sezikis on line three. That way, so you have a really strong third line, which they've been really needing. Um, bump Sezikis up a little bit and have Fashing, McLean, something, Clutterbuck or whatever, Goche, um, Holmstrom, Sezikis, Pajot. Um, but I, I kind of, to your point, <laughs> Nelson Horvat Barzell sounds great. Um, oh, I've Moose, been banging on that drum for a long uh, time. Palmieri's, which would mean it was Palmieri, Pajot, or Sezikis, and Engvall, and then the rest of your kind of lineup, just get like, McLean's on the fourth line with Martin, uh, Fashing, Clutterbuck, or whatever, and then Wallstrom's in the lineup with either Goche or uh, whomever on the third line. It's like, uh, that would be, and then you have you have Lee to move down to the third line too. Again, that kind of puts him in the place where you've always said he, he belongs. Um, I thought that was interesting. I thought that would be a... If you're going to make the push, you're going to go through your last 30-whatever games here. Um, that's the way you do it. You really turn it on its head. I I don't think it's the way. I'll, take that, I'll walk that back a little bit. It's an interesting way to do it. I think it would be really hard to defend it would be easy to kind of spread it out when you need to kind of like putting dry and mcdavid together when you need to it's really super effective at the very least i'd like to see wad do this even occasionally and not just like on a power player late in the game just like throw out a super line so it's it's definitely got some appeal uh i don't i don't mind that if mclean plays well i didn't think he played bad um he was going out there with energy. I liked I liked how he played over, over the last week or so. Uh, again, as I've said a, a lot on the show, he was invisible in a good way. It wasn't that he did anything uh, bad, but he's just, yeah, he's going out there being guy. And on the fourth line, that's all you need. You need guy to play and not be a liability, um, which is not something the fourth line has done uh, in bunches this season. Uh, so it's, it's kind of good to see that. Um, I do wonder if the the second line, or or rather, I wonder if JG Pajot or Sezikis have it any longer to play in the top six. Because at that point, you're being asked to do a lot more offensively. Like, yes, there will be a super line that will, you know, carry the load, if you will. Uh, but you're probably subtracting from Kyle Palmieri and whoever is playing on that left because it's been kind of a revolving door. Seems Pierre Engvall can't stick. Um, yeah, it's real tough. And it, with two coaches. Yeah. Now, I think he was hurt, so I don't want to, you for, know. Yeah, for the beginning so it's of a while, I think he's been hurt. It's a little tough to say that, but so you hope that he can just kind of come back and at least have that line dominate. You know, when when you really just have one line click in, it's it's tough. Again, Palmieri scored game time goal the other night. Um the five minute major uh against Pellick that uh, Brendan Gallagher had again on his elbow. Um 
worked out in the other's favor, and then they blow it in overtime in Montreal. Um, the Panthers game wasn't great. It's again, it's just these mistakes and just like not being able to clear the puck in simple situations and real just peewee stuff. Uh, that's been the story of this season and really going back to last year, just like these simple mistakes. Um, I had the schedule up and I took it away. But so the honors are off this week. They get a little bit of a rest. Uh, All-Star game. Um, they come back and I, they, I know that they're against uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They, they're they in Toronto. So yes, they're in Toronto on February 5th. And they're back at home against the yeah. Lightning, Flames, Kraken, Rangers. Um, and then well, they have the Penguins. Rangers game after that Rangers game yeah not not home uh, a, a short uh, bus ride away out in uh, not the Meadowlands what the hell is it called MetLife MetLife um, is it still like the Meadowlands complex yeah is that what they're yeah. still calling because there's other stuff there yeah I don't know if it's called that but it's it's where the Meadowlands at least was so not next door to Continental Airlines Arena um, <laughs> which growing up that's where the Devils used to play I still saw there are some arenas where I just instinctively go towards the the old name um just not thinking about it very much um that is not an easy schedule I mean, like the flames may be the easiest game there and they've just been struggling but who knows what the well, islanders they've been playing better lately though they've been playing oh so okay of course they're playing better lately yeah um <laughs> yeah it's it's not an easy schedule and it just picks up like you're just playing you have this week off but you're playing every two or three days now kind of for the foreseeable future um, when's the trade deadline? Why do we not know this? Uh, March 8th. Hold, I, you know what? I tongue in cheek said that Calgary's playing better. They, they won their last game, but lost four straight before that, but also won four straight before that. So, so it's like they're, they're all over the hot map. and cold. Yeah. Yeah. So the Irish have 13 games before the trade deadline. I think we'll know way quicker than that. Um, maybe by the stadium series, if they're buyers or sellers, um, which is only four games. Um, maybe after that game, if they're really not playing well. And look, again, they can play well and not get the points, but ultimately they need they need the points to stay in the race. And if they're not getting those points and not loser points, like winning games, they need to win like, I don't know, four out of six going forward and maybe go 4-0-2 oh, um, in this next little stretch to like really, because again, you're playing – Teams around you now, you're fighting for wild card spot. You're playing the Rangers, which is really important. Um, then they're playing the Penguins. You're not really playing anyone in the Metro after the Ranger game and the Penguins. They're, they don't play anybody in the Metro again until they play the Rangers again on March 17th. So they don't have any control. They can't beat any of those teams and make up that ground, which is a huge problem. So even if they play well, if the rest of the teams wake up around them, they could be in some trouble. So they really need to come out of the break, um, have a have an emotional game, not at home, against the Maple Leafs, uh, create some momentum, have, maybe take some time. I don't really know if they skate or have they're in touch with the coach at all uh, during the break. I assume at least for some of the All Star break, they're on quote vacation, but. Um, yeah, it's. Is there a cutoff for you where it just won't work? Like, what's what's a record they need to come out? You know, the first six games after the break, uh, where do they where do they need to go? Like, what's what's it look like after after they come back next week? So, uh, Panthers. I mean, I think that they always play the Maple Leafs well, so I have a hard time saying, you know. I, I tend to believe that the Islanders are going to win when they play the Maple Leafs. That's they, they do that. Well, I think looking at, let's just look at the first four games against uh, right before the stadium series. I think they can win three out of four there. Uh, the stadium series is a crap shoot. Like that's literally dependent on the way the wind is blowing that day, <laughs> just because of the conditions. Um, and then look, you go and play an inconsistent Penguins team. You go and play an inconsistent Blues team. Um, the Lightning, like, I feel like the Lightning always kick the, kick the 
the crap out of the Islanders. Um, but you know, the Red Wings by the end of the month, like the only two games that I look at for this month and I say the Islanders put it in the book they're going to lose is Dallas and one of the two Lightning games. I think every other game here is a winnable game. Not that they should win all of them. Like, that's a, that's asking a lot. But I think so you're going the, through the 26th. Three, four, uh, eight. Out of the 10 games, I can see them bringing six or seven wins home. That's crazy. They're not traveling super far. The Dallas game might be the furthest one. Um, but they're staying in the general vicinity for a while, which is good. Um, yeah, that would be... Again, they're just not playing anybody in the Metro other than... I mean, the Penguins game is going to be big. They really, they screwed the fucking pooch in December, those two games. Um, so they really need to win that game. That's super important. And by then, I think you know. If you've not played well up to that point, whether you win or lose that game against the Penguins, I think you know the direction where you just, you're digging yourself too big of a hole to get out of the, the rest of the way. I think that's, I think that's tough. I mean, they did just beat the Stars. It, it's not impossible to do it again. Um, I like that rink, by the way. If you ever have a chance to go to Dallas and hang out down there and, and go to a game, um, it's it's a very good time. Um, and Detroit, like, it, yeah, it's a lot of winnable games. Looking at the next 10, I agree. I think six or seven wouldn't be out of the question. They just need to wake up. They need to just come back a different... They've, they've been a different team. But they truly need to come out of the gate just, I don't know, on a mission. They need to just go on a tear. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's, again, not just collecting points in OT. You need to be winning games. Again, they haven't won a game in feels like forever. Like, and, and I know they just did. I know they just beat Dallas. But if it just, there's so few and far between that, yeah, they're just continuing to shoot themselves in the foot. So they need to wake up a little bit. Um. It's almost enough here. Uh, we're going to end with the stadium series jerseys. Um, big game against the Rangers. I think it's fun. Um, I know you're going to the Rangers Devils. Uh, is that the day before, two days before? I doubt they're going to do back to back, but yes, yeah, the day before. Oh, is it? They're making the Rangers play back to back outdoor games? Yeah, Rangers Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, Devils Flyer Saturday. Rangers oh, Devils Islanders. Flyers. Got it. Devils I Flyer they're... Saturday, Rangers Islanders. Sunday afternoon. Wow. Yeah. So, um, that'd be really cool. I don't know why I assume the Rangers are playing too. Maybe just because I'm bitter. Uh, I just assumed they were just giving the Rangers. Well, that's shit. because they played two in the stadium series. Got uh, it. Sorry. The original stadium series. Right. Okay. I, I just assumed it was the same thing again. I forgot the Flyers were involved. Um, what do you think of the jerseys? I mean, I think there was an initial reaction. You and I were texting. Yeah. But now that you've had like time to sit on it, um... I still I still think the same thing I texted you the other day is that they're just super lazy. I think that there was it was a couple of things. One, it's lazy. Two, it's Lamorell. Like if if Lou wanted anything, it was don't take away from the team, and that's what this is. And I think the other teams eh, sands the Flyers because they're kind of blah too. It's like a standard away jersey. But, like, the Devils got a little bit creative, right? The Rangers got very creative. I think there was an opportunity here to do something, like we've been talking about, with these alternate jerseys that never happen, um, except for, you know, the one re re reverse retro, which I think <laughs> I think Lamorella was kind of forced into doing. Um, I think He looked at the potential dollars and cents of that one. I don't think that was one yeah. that he wanted to do because it was he thought it was good. Right. So, you know, I, I think what happened here was that, you know, he had more control in this in this sense and said, keep it simple. Like, I literally sent you the Nashville Predators one. It's the same jersey, just recolored and minus the Nashville and the Isles. And I thought it was lazy. I think they had, you know, I think they had an opportunity to do something different here and they blew it. I agree. Um I think what kills me is these explanations. I didn't have, I don't have them pulled up. It's like the stripe is this big because it's like the hull of a ship or something yeah, like that. I and I just don't, 
I guess that's the closest to a fisherman we were going to get is it being a the stripe is like a ship. Wow. Okay. Um, I'll say that they, I, I love the dark blue. The orange really pops for me. Um, the back looks great. The numbers are big. Um, at first, I thought they were goofy, but I was kind of looking at them. I think it'll, I wonder what the rest of the setup is going to look like. I imagine it's just blue pants. But I think with the socks, like, I think it'll look really good. Um, I'm sure it's going to look better with the kit. Like, yeah. That I, a, I can't deny that. I, I, I try, some, I try I to think of it concepts. like that. Though. Sure. But I saw some concepts out there of like just just swapping out the the aisles for like, you know, the the A lighthouse logo. And like that was a million times better. Like if oh. that was it, I would have been like, yeah, good job. But this was just ugh, lazy, 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 lazy. Yeah, it's not my favorite. So it's going to sound like I'm defending it in a second. I don't mind it. The it's not my I favorite too, thing. It looks cool. Oh, like I God. just, they, they could have done a better job, but it's not the worst thing. Do you remember those Oilers jerseys that were just dreadful, just standard blue and orange and no other colors in between? They're literally those jerseys. Oh, it is like that. And it is a lot like that national jersey. I don't know. I guess I just didn't have a, <laughs> people that had very high expectations maybe for this, and I just definitely didn't. So I thought I was like, it wasn't going to happen. Oh, yeah. Like, I, you knew what was what, you know, like they were going <laughs> to, it wasn't going to be a cool orange jersey. It wasn't going to have the lighthouse as the, as the primary logos, yes. despite everybody's, you know, whatever. And I, it may just be a really small group of people that want that. Although I, I had another friend text me about it as well. Actually sent me that lighthouse one, um, which looked sick. Like, I thought it was really good. Um, they did just do the fishermen. I think the, the uh, one of the bigger problems is that so you can order these, but then they weren't going to ship until after the game. Yeah, <laughs> but you can buy them from Isles Lab, but that means you have to, you know, like we used to do, actually have to go to the store. But not a lot of people do that. People order things typically. They see it comes out. Would have been a great Christmas gift. Um, I don't know. I think. I mean, the players are all saying blah, blah, blah. It does look like an outdoor sweater, though. Like, it does remind me. It's not as cool as, like, the New York Americans back in the day, just because that was a very cool jersey. It had the stars and looked like a big American flag. But it, it kind of reminds me of, like, an actual, like, a varsity sweater or something like a college varsity sweater. Um, the aisle thing is a little goofy, sure, whatever. Um I just sent you the mock-up with the lighthouse logo on it. You can't tell me that that is not just better. Oh yeah, that's the exact one that. that yeah, I saw this one from Hockey Night. Yeah, of course, it's like a better. It's a better jersey. It, it's interesting it, the having the Isles logo on the shoulder, even if it says Isles, makes it seem like a farm team jersey. It makes it seem like it was like the old Bridgeport Islanders jersey. Yep. Like just saying Isles or even with the lighthouse, it looks goofy. It makes it look like it's an affiliated team and not the actual team. Yep. Like the Oilers uh, winter classic jersey or or heritage classic jersey. Like that was super different and I can't blame them for trying. Did I love it? No. But did I dislike it as much as I dislike the lazy islanders one no it's a it's an oil drop with a banner underneath that says edmonton oilers with the numbers it, in the middle of the oil drop it's awful the However, the numbers in the middle tried. of the oil drop was is all, like too much yeah i don't mind it it's definitely it just goes back to like just like a much older style of jersey i think it, it's hard when seattle and vegas killed it like they just yeah. had a different bar for these jerseys. Yeah. So now seeing anything else, um, I th it's funny. I think just the Oilers logo on that jersey, everything else is the same. Would look great. I think that's the hard part is when it's like an easy change away, kind of like this one. Yeah. You could have just put the Islanders logo on this one. It'll have been different enough. You don't have to do all that much different. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. The um, I like the Calgary Flames one with the circle. I always like uh, yeah, jerseys with that on it. It's it's yeah, a, that one's better. I mean, listen, like you, 
you hit the nail on the head though like the bar for these these outdoor game jerseys was set by seattle that is potentially the nicest one ever in my opinion like i think i need one of those yeah the vancouver one is really cool from a few like a number almost 10 years ago or 10 years ago exactly the maroon one with the the stripes on the the arms is really cool um older ottawa ones are great with the stripes um there have been some really good ones but seattle's really it's the color scheme for me like just bringing that green back it's very nostalgic very 90s um i always dig that um vegas even though they did another jersey oh their throwback was terrible but they didn't really have one so whatever but the their even their their uh, outdoor jersey was great um yeah, it's it doesn't need to be hard, but it's like the NHL All Star jerseys this year. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? I don't, I don't. There's there's a million ways to go about it, and it's like it feels somewhat irrelevant. So it's it almost doesn't matter. But like the Doritos things or the Carl's Jr. or the Mario, whatever. Like it was just so easy to spoof almost immediately. Uh, the the joke was just. Low-hanging fruit doesn't begin to describe it. Um, but I just want to make sure we end the show on that. Anything else? What are you thinking about? Wah? <laughs> Whatever? No. No, just, you know. Let's see how the All-Star game goes. Let's hope nobody gets hurt, right? I said this weeks ago. We were talking about, like, oh, this snub. I, You know what? Matt Brazell, take your fine. Um, actually, I mean, like, go, but like, don't do anything, don't do fast as skater. I do, I don't know, pass the pucks from do shot accuracy, like, don't do anything else. Uh, playing that game like half speed, less than that, just don't get hurt for the love of God. The less Islanders in the, in the all star game, the better. It yep. does not matter one little bit. I know it like gets them money, and I guess that's good and whatever, like, you hit bonuses or whatever but yeah it, it just super doesn't matter to me just don't get hurt enjoy yourself it's good pr it's good for the team i guess but we don't need that shit it's fine we've we've had our horror stories we don't need to continue that agreed february not nhl games are not been kind to on players we're just gonna go ahead and have as little of them as possible playing games uh it's probably for the best if, if we're all set, we well, let's, let's wrap it up. Wrap it. Please rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to or watch the show. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and YouTube at Announcement Hockey. You can find James' work at New Jersey Hockey now in the fourth period. Um, who do you have for the Super Bowl? It's a couple weeks away. Oh, what do I have for the Super Bowl? I mean, <laughs> freaking Chiefs are in it again. They're probably just going to win. <laughs> I know. I know a lot of Niners fans. All of a sudden, um, oh. so I don't, I kind of want to root for them, just because. But um, I don't know. But you can. Uh, by now, the ad is already run. But use that promo code DHPN. A lot of people bet on the Super Bowl. Um, if there's any any time to jump in. This is it. Uh, definitely use that code. Helps us out a lot. Helps the network. Uh, as always, thanks to the Hockey Podcast Network for being great partners for us. Um, so you're going Chiefs. I'm going Niners, I think. Um, do you want to? Well, wait till let's think of a, an actual bet for next episode for us. Uh, loser does something weird. Uh, I'm not shaving my beard, so don't get any ideas. <laughs> um, but something else. And uh, we'll, we'll say in the next episode, we'll think about it. Yeah, go for it. If I win, you have to edit the podcast afterwards. I know you yeah. hated doing it. I hope you all like really high pitch noises. Right. Hope you just like not having a podcast because it's not going to get done. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, James, we're going to We're done here. Until next time, all. Uh, Matt Barzell for the Fast Skater in the Fast Skating competition. <laughs>